Chapter 48, Hemshe Chaim Beis, Volume 1, we're on page 83. I'll do a little summary, especially of the end of the last chapter, 47. Memzai. The Rebbe Rashab here is finishing up some key elements to the puzzle of what exactly is Er Pnimi. Er Pnimi means the integrated energies that manifest in containers which is the essence of all existence. The way existence was shaped is that there's energy within container. Everything has energy in container. With its letters on a page and the ideas within the letters, with it's a body and a soul, with it's an appliance and its function, form and function, whatever it is, everything has both a body, an outer dimension, and an inner dimension. And, that, and, they, and they are symbiotic, they work like hand and glove, they become one. That's integrated energy. That's, how, that's what defines the structure. That integrated energy also determines the gradations, milo mata, higher and lower. Which means that there's diversity. It's not just an equalized thing. The energy flows in different degrees, manifests in different ways and so on. By contrast, Er Makif does not have those properties. Er Makif is a transcendent, not a permeating energy, it's a transcendent one. It surrounds. It's an equalizer. The faculties of the human being are er, Eris Primim, are integrated energies. The will of a person or desire is a Makif. Makif is not, if we had Makif alone, we would not have a structure of existence as we know it. So, and, and as I said, in finishing up and understanding what the Zer Primi is, the Rebbe Rashab explains that being this is the plan, it's rooted all the way up in even in the energy that's before the Tzimtzum, that God envisioned and desired such a structure. That is what we call the Ten Hidden Spheres. The Ten Hidden Spheres. Or Shir Atzmei Bekeach, where God envisioned, in a sense, uh, prepared himself, um, set aside, defined a definition of what existence would be like. Then there's the tzimtzum, in order to conceal the intensity of that level, especially as being that it's still connected to the infinite possibilities. And then it comes finally as these energies manifest in containers. Now, um, So, we take away the need for a structure, the, the desire for a structure of the worlds, you don't have a reprimi, you don't, there's no need for it. There's not, not even, there's no possibility even there. So the whole thing is based on that there's something that's more desired because divine so-called personality on its own is just, is not, is not defined by structures. And therefore, the elements meaning the world, the Seder Stasos, the structure of existence, is what defines, and that's why there are ten spheres in the first place. As he said, that's the reason that Lula Elam is there wouldn't be this whole, all these levels. So the ten spheres are only the Tzedek HaElamis, as the words he uses, the Tzedek HaElamis. And he demonstrates this with the Zayhar, a Zayar that makes it clear that the whole thing is only because the only names that you use in God, all the ten spheres, are all about the relationship with an existence. So the spheres don't have any role without a relationship with something outside of them, which is the existence and structure. This is the key thing that he's now discussing. So in the previous chapter, Memzayan, he went deeper into it. After explaining that Malchus and Midas, there we understand. There's no... There's no uh, Malchus Hamid is without a relationship with something else. Ain Melo Bleyam. It can't be kingship without a nation. It can't be leadership without people, without another entity. And emotions are not will, will dissipate and have no purpose and will not exist if there's no one to express their emotions to. But now we're talking about, in the last chapter, Meichin. What about intellect? 
intellect, he made it clear that intellect is not is is you, can exist even without another, as opposed to emotions and malchus. So what is its role, and how does that work? Clearly, it also is not necessary. God doesn't need a mind to function. The essence of God is is all self-contained, intact, and so on. So clearly, the mechan is also let's say the chayelamis. That's Zayir says that clearly, even before the explanation. The question is, what what is the meaning behind that? What is the what is the meaning and understanding of that? That the sphere, as we know, would not be necessary unless there's something outside. But mechan doesn't function with something outside, so does not need something outside. So how is that understood? So basically, even before we get into an explanation, clearly this, they, they play a role that's, that's also connected to existence. Because even though, as I mentioned, even though Moichen intellect does not need someone else, but, that does, but it also does not mean that uh, it negates someone else. It still is a, it is, it is a revelation that is going to have some impact on someone else. In other words, if a teacher, even if he has to be on his own as he concentrates or contemplates on the matter, afterwards that will help him teach someone else. So Moichen is not fundamentally so-called apart from others. So you talk about Atzmus, God, you could say God has no connection, no relationship. You want a relationship with others, that's the spheres. So the spheres, the whole spheres, their purpose is because there's going to be a relationship with another. So you clearly see that Meichen is also ultimately connected to a relationship, but the question is how. So now the Rebbe Rashab quotes the Pardis. And the Pardis says that even Chachma Bina, even intellect, is also, the Pardis is explaining the Zayhar. So we have a source that also Meichen, also intellect, is also for the Tzerech elements. So first, the Rebbe Rashab attempts to explain it, I don't say attempts, he actually explains it, that the purpose of Meichen is not for the world directly, but it's for the Midas. In other words, emotions are what govern the existence, because emotions have a relationship with something outside of itself. But for emotions to be balanced, pnimim, internalized, integrated, and not just wild emotions, and not just uh, um, feelings that are have no, uh, have no uh, settling element to them, you need to have Meich. That's the initial explanation. As an aside, he explains that Pnimi is the element, the function of Midas is more Pnimi is because it feels something, it connects to something, it's more internal in that sense. But fundamentally, Midas are more of a desire, like he says, a Ratzin. And Meichen is what creates real integration. You know, you, in, you internalize it, and so on. So Midas without Meichen would not be properly internalized, basically. Emotions without intellect. But then he continues that the Pardis, it appears from the Pardis, no, Chachm Bin is not, intellect is not just to help the emotions be internalized in their relationship with others, which simply means, for example, a person could have a feeling to someone, and if it's not thought through, the feeling could be a very wild feeling, it can be unbalanced, it can be obsessive, it can be uh, distorted, and so on. That also the Meichen themselves have a role in their play in relationship with others. And here, he explains this by, by saying, by understanding the purpose of Atsilas. And here's really where it comes together in a beautiful way. Atsilas, the purpose of Atsilas is for there to be an interface. So a world like ours is not self-contained. It's not airtight and can never reconnect to its source, to the divine. Without Atsilas, the divine would be in one world, concealed and hidden from us and we would be left to our own resources which are very limited we could reach some places but it wouldn't be very high or very far to have divine experience Atsilis is a necessity because Atsilis is a bridge it's an interface that brings God into the terms on our terms of a structure and that expressed in two ways the structure that we said of existence of Erpinimi, what do we say? That everything is made up of a structure of energies and containers. But, br- but generally, it breaks into two categories. Cognitive skills and emotional skills. We use our, our minds to contemplate, to understand, and we use our hearts to feel. That's the structure. 
So both those elements need to be permeated with a divine experience. Not just we should feel excited about something that's spiritual and godly, but also we should understand. So the, the Midas of Atsilas reveal, the, allow us to have an emotionally divine experience. So not just an, 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 an experience of emotions that relate to material things and to worldly things, but we actually can have, as he says, a spilus aliki. Excited about something that's divine. Again, if there was no atzilus, no midas of atzilus, you wouldn't be able to you'd be excited about the material things, about food, about money, about honor, even about maybe intelligence, but all in, in a worldly context. Think of animals, for example. Animals, do they get excited? Yeah, they get excited when they hunt and they, they make a kill. But even that, you don't see them celebrating. They do what they have to do. Because the animal has never seen, like the Friedrich Rebbe says, a behemoth camel de himmel nishgizen, and animals walk on all four. Physiologically, they're structured that way because they don't have that divine dimension. They don't have a, a, a Tzalem Elikim in them. They're God's creatures, and they praise God, and they connect to God, and they serve God. But to say they get excited about godliness, no, a human being can get excited. How do we get excited? Why? We're also mortals. We're also human beings. We get excited about the good material things because there's Midas of Atsilas. Therefore, we can have a midah, a motion, but it's atzilis. It's a divine world. So that opens the door for us for a conscious, actual conscious, divine experience. Not a concealed one, not mesuteres, not and so on. What about intellect? Can we comprehend something that's divine? That's because there's meichin of atzilis. There's chachom bin of atzilis. That's some explanation. So there we got the real interface of working, how intellect and emotions which on our own could be very very uh, um, mundane, have now a divine dimension to them. And now comes the next section. And here I want to elaborate some more here. But I think after stating what I just said, it'll be a lot easier to relate to. Then he starts with Kosov HaPardis. It's the bottom of the, the, the two-thirds down the page. The Pardis says that before the Midas extended, before Ispashto Samidas, God conceived in his essence and in his wisdom, in the comprehension of his essence, because he and his essence he and his essence are all one. He and his wisdom rather are called Atzamechot, are all one. So somewhat of an abstract statement, but it's the same part that's talking about how Meichan is necessary for the worlds. So this part is really needs an explanation. First of all, what does this mean, this line? Before the Midas, before the emotions, he conceived on his own, and he and his wisdom are one, essence. And what is it relevant, most importantly, to what we just discussed? We just said the reason there's Meichen intellect is in order for us to have divine contemplation, divine comprehension. So what's going on here? So he's very, very dense and very short here, but... I spoke about it very, I summarized it yesterday, we learned it quicker. I want to just break it down. She says, What is this, what is the Mahadis referring to? What does this mean that before he extended his emotions, he was thinking in his mind? You know, on an obvious level, does God need to think about something? Clearly, it's talking about the earlier part of the structure before the Midas began, just like we first contemplate and that awakens an emotion. God too made it that way. Not that he has to have it that way, but that's part of how he wants existence to be. So he says, neither that that's Chachma bin and Ein Sev Baruchu. He doesn't say it specifically, but just to make things easier to understand, I would say this is Chachma Bina of uh, the Esses Spheres Agnuses, the ten hidden spheres. The only reason I think he doesn't say that is because remember, according to the Pardis, Esses Spheres Agnuses are the root of the containers, not the root of the energies. And according to Ayan Bayes, he's going with as the root of the energies. But still doesn't mean that he negates the Pardis altogether. There is a concept. But the Pardis would say, Chacham Bin is the Kalim. I'm just saying that as an aside. But based on the Hemshech and the flow of what comes afterwards, clearly, I'm just saying it because we, let's go back to Shir Atzmi B'Kayach. God, the artist, envisioned in his mind a structure. That envisioning has ten spheres in it. One part of it is the Gimel Roshenus. We call that either Keser Chach Mabina, intellect. 
Or sometimes Chochem Bina Das. I think here it's more Kesach Chochem Bina. And Zayin Tachtenis is the emotional part. And we said the emotional part is definitely understood that's relationship with something outside of it. Here we're wondering about the intellect. So we said the intellectual part gives us the ability to comprehend the divine. What is that in its root? It's God thinking to himself before he so-called manifests in emotions. That's before there's this Pastor Samidis. But this requires some explanation. What does this mean? There's God thinking to himself. But if you think about it, it's literally almost the same word. When he says, Shir Atzmei Bekeach, what does that mean? When you say, the divine Shir Atzmei, he measured within himself, he, def- he uh, designated within himself a space, the potential of what is going to come afterwards. So he doesn't, there it doesn't say the word Machshove, but we said, you know, Machshove da no emlech, Ola Bertzene. There is an element of... Um, intellectual there, because it's like he conceived. Think of an artist. When an artist is conceiving an idea, you're not just talking about an emotional feeling. He's planning something. A plan is an, a plan is already an intellectual process. So God's plan is this Chochmah Bina within the so-called Godhead, in that essence. I'm explaining a little more than what he's saying, but it's just just to round it up, because this is what he's been discussing till now. And I believe the reason that Arashab doesn't feel, or doesn't elaborate line by line, because he's relying that we learn properly everything till here. So if you fill it in, what, you, what we're dealing is, Chachma Binin Ein Sei Baruch. Now to explain that further, he quotes an Egeres HaKedish. So of course I opened up. So Egeres HaKedish is actually Kuntra Sachra, which sometimes is referred to. You know, Tanya is made up of five sections. Right? You have... Um, you have Shari Chudamuna, you have Geras Atshuva, then you have a, the first three were actually, um, uh, uh, the first three is, uh, then comes Igris and Geras Akedish. This is collected letters that were collected later in the later editions of Tanya. And they were included, the Geras Akedish. Then there's Kuntres Achen, which literally means an, uh, the last uh, Kuntres, the last uh, manuscript. And that is more letters. Of the of the Alter Rebbe, sometimes a Geras Hakedish is refers to both the fourth and fifth section. So when he says a Geras Hakedish, he means Kuntres Achnen, and it's the Kuntres Achnen that begins David Zmiris Kerisaluhu, that David called Teira Zmiris songs. That's in Tanya, as I said, page one sixty one a. So just briefly, what does he say in Tanya? He asks a question: Why was David punished? Because he called the song, called Teir's songs. And what was his punishment? <coughs> that he forgot something, as the Talmud says, he forgot something that every child knows. How are you supposed to carry the Aaron? When they carry the Aaron, the, the Ark, they, they didn't carry, like four people carry the, the four different corners and the rods, they faced each other. Because you can't stand with your back to the Torah, to the Ark. So they faced each other. That means two people walked actually backwards. David forgot that. Masa Adam because he forgot how you carry. That was a punishment for him calling the Torah song. So the Altar Rebbe asked the basic question, what's wrong with Torah calling Torah song? And the answer is interesting. The answer is, nothing wrong, Torah is song in many places. But here, where David HaMelech was holding, he should have appreciated that it's not, the Torah is much deeper than just a song for us. It's not our pleasure. It's God's pleasure. And he uses there the expression in explaining it, the union of Yedias Atzmi. The Yedias Atzmi, Yedias HaTera. That there's two parts to Tera. There's how we learn Tera and we have pleasure when we learn. That's Midas, that's songs. Beautiful. But then there's how the Tera is God's pleasures and delights. So when we say the Tera is, 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 is pleasurable or a song, it ultimately means we have a relationship with it. We connect it. David HaMelech was, was, was on this subtle level, the mistake he made was at this point he should have appreciated that it's not a song to you, it's God, something that's something that we can't even relate to. It's beyond us. It's the way God knows the Torah, as he says, the Lushan there, to be Deus Atzmei, Yudeus Now the expression Yudeus Atzmei is actually brought from the Rambam. The Rambam, Maimonides, in the book of Hilchus Yusei Datera, he speaks away the difference between how God knows and how we know things. So when we know something, we know it from outside of us. 
I know you're sitting here. I see it. I see a tree out there, so I know it exists. The tree is not inside of me, because we're all creatures, and creatures relate to everything from the outside in. God, who is, encompasses all of existence, how does He know there's a tree? So the Rambam says, "Yedias atzma yedei kol hanivrayim." In knowing Himself, He knows everything, because everything comes from within Him. Now the Rambam obviously is not speaking the levels of Chassidus in Atmos and so on. And that's why you look right away in the beginning of Tanya when he talks about he brings the Haggah that uh, the chapter um, 2 of Tanya there's that uh, Haggah the gloss where he says that or the Rambam is speaking is already in Seder Shtalshlis. That means how God is Huamadu Yideh how God manifests in knowledge. Everyone agrees he says that there's a level that's beyond knowing. So when we want to understand how God relates to existence, so-called on our terms, He knows us, even there He's not like us. He knows us like, not, not like we know each other. He knows us by knowing Himself. But obviously there's a state in Atmos where even that's not necessary. So the Chassidah speaks about Yudeya and Yudua. Yudeya is how God, for example, uh, relates to existence. Yudua is beyond and He doesn't interconnect, but he, everything is known to Him. But to go back to the discussion here, what we know for clearly is, is that there are three levels at least. There's one is Atmos that we're not really discussing here that's beyond all these levels, beyond knowledge and so on. Then there's God as He knows Himself. Now of course it's hard for us to, how could we talk about God knowing Himself? If He knows Himself, it's not us. But we can relate to it through the process of elimination to know it's not like ourselves. And we can relate to it through examples because that's also part of what Atzillus did. Atzillus gave us the ability to contemplate on the divine and we could imagine it to some extent by using examples from ourselves, which he's going to do in a moment. So what's Yedea Satsumi Yedea Hatera? It means that's how God knows. Now that he knows himself and through that he knows what it says in the Torah, which is his blueprint because Torah and him are one. And that's the meaning in the Pardis so there's a state where there's hu and chachma. There is chachma, but it's all within God, within Himself. So if you think about it, that's exactly what Esther Sagrusis is. Is the artist, or the architect, whatever you want to call it, conceiving in his own entity, already a level that's called conception. Does God have spheres? God forbid. He doesn't need spheres, he doesn't have spheres. But he wants a structure like ours. So, the, so therefore, he creates within himself, first of all, a vision of this structure. And that vision begins with Chachma Bina and then Midas. That Chachma Bina is what the Pardis is talking about. That's the Chachma Bina Insef, and that's the Tanya. The Ges HaKedish. Yediyas Atzma Yedei. I didn't elaborate on this yesterday because we just went through it quickly. But this is the meaning of it. Now, to understand this, this is all this piece... It comes from the Reb Marash, actually. I think it's the Reb Marash's Chiddush. I couldn't find it in my morning before the Reb Marash. It's called Hemshech Yonasi. Yonasi. Tafresh Mem. This is a Hemshech that the Reb Marash said in the year Tafresh Mem. That would be 1880. And interestingly, the Reb Marash said it. He also wrote it. And the Reb Rashab, we have Hanochas from the Reb Rashab that, as he heard it from the Reb Marash. And I looked in those Hanochas and you see how the Rebbe Rashab is taking out both things. Things that he spoke before. Remember about Meich and Amidis, the whole thing with Tamidi Yesu Mekulam, that uh, intellect is... Uh, huh? Yeah, that intellect comes, um, is, uh, doesn't need others and so on, is all there in that Yenis, especially in the Hanochah. Some very interesting things to look at there, by the way. He speaks about Hamidis, when people are living wild in the forest, you see Hamidis affect each other the, the, how we, how, when people are living in a when they let their midas control them you see how much they need each other and how one person affects another when people are bali and they're much less influenced by others it's a point he doesn't make here but an interesting point um, he also brings there an interesting thing I just mentioned that there are shayel shachuvas like Truma Sadesh and others where the, the author itself asks the question and gives the answer in, in halachas for him, in books and svarim, they have sometimes shalosh and shuvis where people asked questions by poskim, by people who ruled, and then they answered. You have many of these. 
But the Shail Shal Shuv is where the, the person who wrote the Shuv also wrote the Shail. He uses that as an example of Bnei Levinatzmei's intellect that you could even write a question and answer for yourself. Anyway, some interesting side points. But now going back, so Hemshachin is see when he explains this Indian, he explains at length this whole discussion. So this end of this chapter is really to understand it well, you have to look in that Maimur because there's a lot more details there. But, let, but let's now break it down. So we said now that there's a thing called Yediyas Atzmei. That's God knowing himself. Clearly, I just want to qualify again. He doesn't need that. He doesn't need to know himself. But he wants a structure. And a structure consists of intellect and emotions, which is primi. And therefore, also in the Esos Sphere of in the Hidden Spheres, there's Chochmah Bina, which is him knowing himself. To understand this level of knowing himself, the, 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 the Moshele gives in Yenisi in here, is Machshav and Dibur. Our Dibur, speech, expresses an inner thought to another. You don't know what I'm thinking until I say it. When I want to express myself to you, I share something in words. What's Machshava? Machshava is conscious thought. Machshava is revealing, expressing to yourself your fundamentally innermost unconscious. Helam Atzmi. Before you thought about it, you were not aware or conscious of it. And Machshava reveals it. Then he qualifies and says that even Dibur, there's an element of Dibur that's also to yourself, like he says in the And that's before you speak to another, you're preparing yourself the words that you're going to say. Fine. So now we have these two levels. The level of Dibur, it's very clear, is like Midas. You're speaking to another. That's how the spheres relate unnecessary for another. Why do we need Dibur? To communicate to another. You don't need Dibur for yourself. Just like me, this, don't speak to me. It's not for yourself, it's to express to another. What about the Machshava part? Machshava is already a revelation. It's a revelation from your innermost self to yourself. So that too is also for the worlds, for existence. In a human being, you could argue technically that Machshava is not necessary for other people. Even though... The truth is that in a relationship with people, you're not just speaking to them your, your thoughts, you also can reveal to them your innermost. But he's not discussing that right now. But the way it is in the Maila, the way it is in the, in the, in the divine structure, this Machshav is also the Tzayda Chayalama. So here comes the question. What, what role does it play? What role does this God knowing himself, or what we call Machshav, revealing to himself his innermost dimensions, what role does it play? And he puts the question like this: Why did Why did you need this? Why do you need? Why not just jump to meet this? Have the the the, 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 the divine infinite light ain't safe. Meet this relate to the world. What do you need? This level that he thinks to himself: Yediyasatzme. The truth is, he already answered it. He answered because he wants Yediyah, he wants us to have divine contemplation. That's going to be his answer. But now he's discussing it in this context. This level that he knows his innermost self, God needs to know it. He needs a machshava to, to, to think about it. So clearly there's something that's a fun, that something happens when the unconscious divine that is completely concealed, Helmatmi, reveals itself, even to itself, something happens. Let's go back to Shiratsmi Bikayach. What happens? Why does the artist have to envision in his mind the piece of art? Why doesn't he just get, take go to a canvas and start painting? Because it doesn't work that way. You need a plan. So the artist, before he conceived of this particular structure, this particular piece of art, he had many possibilities, or he had no possibilities. He was just on his own. Then arose in his will. All the birds saying that he arose in his desire. He wants a particular piece of art. That is the Machshav al He's already revealed something from his unconscious that a moment before was completely concealed, even from himself. He wasn't aware that he's going to ever come up with this. So like Machshav, it revealed it to himself. But that's the first step for becoming revealed to others. And, and, their, and, their, and, their, and their intellect. That's what he says here now. So, I'm just reading it from inside. So, what's the reason? 
that you need this so-called machshava level, yedias atzmei yedeya kol or the expression of the of the pradis chach mabina in ain't safe. You know what 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 is this kedim ispashus? I mean, how you mischakim batzmusei? What is this mischakim batzmusei? They taught themselves. So achin inyan the bchdei shiyim itzis bchinus chach mishe gamzu lasa yuchel avina. Since God wants us to understand Him, you first need the revelation of such a concept. How are we going to comprehend God if God remains concealed beyond comprehension? So the first thing is you need a revelation on the level of Machshav, the level of Meichen. Yes, at this point it's Meichen La'atzmei. But it's now revealed. He's now thinking. He's focusing on something. And that's how you can have Chachma Vatzilis because there's a Chachma in Esses for Sagnuzis. Now, since he already said Yedias Atzmi Yedia Teira, you know, till now he didn't use the word Teira till the Geras Akedish. So now he explains it in the context of Teira. Where do we know God? So this needs a little more, as I said, I'm giving more filling in the uh, Pirush Rashi, so to speak, here. Where do we know God? So yes, we could contemplate about God by nature. You could look at nature. Like the Rambam says, Kates is Yahweh. How do you come to love and, and, and awe of God is by contemplating on nature. But first of all, it doesn't say there to understand God. It says to come to love and awe. How do we understand God? So there's only one way. Well, there's more than one way, but the main way is because God revealed himself in the Torah. He told us about himself. When Moshe asks Hashem, what are you like? He told him. God reveals himself through the Torah. Once we have the Torah, we could also look in the universe and find examples for godliness. So I'm explaining this because, again, these lines he doesn't say. So how do we understand God? That's Chochmah Satayr. Shehu'in Yemichin is Chochmah Satayr. K'meshul HaMail HaDayin. So, Chachma the Teda. Now, how did the Teda work? How was the Teda conveyed to us? Exactly like he just said. There's Atzmus beyond everything. Then he desires and wants to have a structure. That structure includes intellect and emotions. So, we have Istakal Baraisa Baral. Teda is God's wisdom. It's God's wisdom. One with him. How is the love? How does he know the Teda before there's Yedia Satsma? How he knows himself? We can't relate to that. That's like Teda and God is one, it's just one entity. But it's not words, it's not details, it's not a Teda that God can give someone. How do you give wisdom to someone? First, you need to define the wisdom for yourself. So Teda is God's wisdom. So the first stage, So the so the first stage is God has a Teda that he looks at. That's Yedias Atzmi Yedias HaTeda. That's what Dovid HaMelech missed. He jumped. He wanted a Teda, how we're enjoying it already. And what, missed, what he missed was this root. That before the Teda is understood by us, there's a Teda first how it's understood by God. How God looks into it. Now why does God have to look in his Teda? He knows the Teda. He wrote the Teda. It says wisdom. Because God wants a level that we're going to be able to relate to. So God creates, so to speak... A level called Chochmah. That's what Mishakim Ba'atz Musa. That's God studying Teda. Lamayla Daim. But there it's Lamayla Ba'adaim B'shul Azulas. And She'en B'shul Azulas. It's not right now for the other. The purpose of it is for the other. But the state that it's in right now is learning on your own. In other words, the whole purpose of learning on your own, why Meichin is really separate, is not because it's fundamentally separate from existence, it's because that's the way. The process of making works. To understand something, you have to be alone. You can't be involved with other people. So the same thing is in the root. God is, so to speak, now thinking of Teda on his terms. But now, something fundamental has happened. The Teda is no longer in the unconscious divine uh, source. It's now become a body of wisdom. At least in the mind of God. So it means, right now, it's not yet for another. No one can yet relate to it. But this, what's become is, now we have already like Machshove, it's become revealed. So now, Yecheli is Basogus Azulus. Another person could potentially now comprehend it. 
Because the teacher has begun to already manifest in this. I'm reading, I'm just reading inside because it's just, you see here, every line here, without really elaboration, is so dense. And yesterday, you know, we knocked it off and I knew that we need to go through this again. Like he said, now he's connecting it all. In other words, not only is it not a question, it's not a question, what he said before that Chochmah is not for another it's completely not contradicting what we're discussing here, as he says. There we said, it's not for another because you could sit alone and contemplate and conceive ideas. But, it's, but, 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 but even that is not a chokhme like you're sitting in your unconscious and not thinking. You are, it's a chokhme, it's, it's a tangible wisdom. You're just not. It's not necessary for you to reveal it to another, but it's fully capable of. And in this case, the only reason God does it is for another. So we human beings, interestingly, you know, you could derive from this. We can learn and not share with another, because learning doesn't necessitate sharing. But if you really understand why God created wisdom, the whole purpose of wisdom is that you learn and share with another. That's the whole reason God created this whole idea. Okay. So, it's not necessary. But its fundamental essence, its nature, is that it could be. And that's the example. And then he goes That's Chachmedatzilis. And then came a time. That's why it's so important. So before Matan Teda, what, what Teda was there? We say the others learned the Teda beforehand. We say, The world preceded existence. So what type of Teda was there? That was the Teda of Yedir Satsme. There was still the teacher, the master, the way he's talking about it, the way he's understanding it. Then came a time, which begins actually with Avram Avinu, but then that's only in Atzillus, and, and Moshe brought it down into Biyah. So you have here the whole picture of how Teda came. Teda is, Teda is an example of the levels we spoke. Remember the three levels, how it goes from the ten hidden spheres into the Kav, all the way into energies inside containers. That's how the Teda worked. In the essence of the ten hidden spheres, the Mishak and Ba'atzmei, God, Yedir Satsmei, Yedir Satsmei, He knows the Teda. Then that creates the stage that after it's Simpsum and so on and so forth, the Teda can now possibly, potentially be understood by others. And then comes the time when, they, when it is understood by others. And it's given to us all the way down to Biyah. So Avram Avinu and the others basically had it like it's Natsilis, which is not yet, the, obviously there's the full Teda and the way it's complete, the way it comes down on earth. And not the etzimah teda. It's only the, the, the part of it. And then comes the way it comes down. But in order for there to be this level of chachme by us, after Matan Teda, you need to have So first you need it, the way it's not connected to anyone else. The way he knows it himself, he goes again to that language in Ageres HaKedosh. Then to round it out, Rabbi Rashab brings from chapter 15, that this is the level, see, there's Eses Fir Sagnus, he clearly says Eses Fir Sagnus. So now he rounds it out. In Ak you have two things. I, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, in Atik. You have Gimur Roshayin of Atik and Zayin Tachtenis. You have the Meichin of Atik, that's the meichin of Eses Sphere Sagnuzes, the intellect. That is, is, is separate from, necessary, but separate from, and that will later become. And then there's Atik Yemish, and that's, then there's the design Tachtain, is that the, mid, the midis of, of the ten hidden spheres, Atik. And that's what he says, Atik is Sosem Be'etzem. So it fits beautifully. Sosem Be'etzem is a level that's completely concealed. But that's revealed through the Gimur of of Atik, but it's still to himself, Yediyas Atzmei. And this is the level of Leib Chachmi Yediyah, and he explains, this is not what he said Leib Chachmi Yediyah before, 
Before we said Chakim, God is wise and not and conscious wisdom, not in knowable wisdom. There are two ways to interpret that. There's not a knowable wisdom. That's how it's in the spheres after the Tzimtzum. So even the Chachma after the Tzimtzum is also not knowable until it comes into the Kalim, the containers. Here he's talking the third level, the first of the three levels. That even the Esa Sphere of is also a Chachim B'leib Chachmi Yediyah. And that is that it's fundamentally not known. And that is the level you'd be dear satsmi you dear satir. Vaidation that's all shum shem shum chok vidia nim tachim chok that's all shum chok me idea. I hope this was helpful. Any questions? Avram. It's actually very um, eloquent, if I may say so. Very powerful. You see here the beauty of the bittel. Because truly what he's saying is that even though Meichen, by nature, is to be alone, lonely, separate, isolated, the real purpose of it was to, was to reveal to us Meichen. It was, that was also God's so-called love and wanting us. But now he wants us to contemplate. He doesn't want us to connect to an emo- excitement and emotional. That's one connection. He wants us to have an internal connection. An internal connection is by definition... You alone, you're sitting and studying. But you're sitting and studying, the fact that you can understand God is because God loved you. It's almost like, an, I don't say emotional, but it's because He wanted you, and He wanted you to understand Him. So He revealed Himself in wisdom, and that wisdom allows that wisdom then to reveal to us, and that's the tater that was given to us. So it's really a very you know, powerful way of understanding how from Atmos, from Einsof, as Bligvu, Svidus Enkets, but there's no there's no definition to Sphiris comes the Gimodashenis and Zayn Tachtenis, the structure of first intellect and emotions. In its root, that's what it is. It's us, God, like I said, Atzilus, for us to have Ispilus Aliki and have we call Havon Aliki. Sog Alikis. Very good. Okay, so we go to chapter Memches. Forty eight. It's a beautiful, very powerful take on on, on, intel, on intelligence. It's the whole uh, later in Ayin Beis. This is going to be a central theme. How Meichin Chachma Meichin is the interface. You see it here already. That Meichin is the interface. Teir is the interface. The kids, what? Yeah, yeah, I learned this yesterday. We're going, we're going to chapter 48. Okay, chapter Memchas. Beautiful. I'm Beispilus. Okay. And we can also, additionally, we can say, Dean is Baraleel, Pedic Ches. That now we discussed earlier, chapter eight. I'm sorry, that Silas should be shvili savas the bia, but I'm shvili shia gili the bia. That the intermediary, the interface of Atsilas is is for two purposes: one for the creation and bringing into being bri yitzir asir the worlds, and also in order there should be a revelation of bia. So in the last chapter we talked about the revelation that we, in this structure of existence, we can. Be excited by the divine, emotional relationship with the divine, and we can have an intellectual relationship, an intelligent relationship, hasaga, comprehension. So now he's setting something, he's adding something that he didn't say till now. Ah, now he's using that silos the clolos. we can say that the ten hidden spheres, and remember, hidden means that they're fundamentally not even there yet, but they're inside somewhere in the, in the divine identification, the divine envisioning. So And that's the level of Atzillus the Klolus, which just brings it back to what he said before. It's Atik. So there's a structure of Atzillus, so-called, within, beyond structure. It's beyond, for structure. In the vision, there's a structure of Atzillus the Klolus, so you explain that this is beginning as Zayin Tachtenis Tachtenis the Essence of this 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me. Re- re- I, my song was wrong. V'yashleima the essence is in Rosh Hashem atzilus the klolos. We can say that these ten hidden spheres, which is the level of atzilus the klolos, we're talking about the macrocosmic atzilus. So now what? What can we say? B'chinas azayin tachtein is the essence sphere. The same. Let's say the chayis avos. The ten, the seven lower spheres in that ten spheres, which is the midays, the emotions, that is, let's say, the, for the its purpose is to serve, is to is for the purpose of let's say the is for the is for the need of creating, bringing into being. Vagimel rishenis and the three meichin, the three upper levels of the ten hidden spheres, and let's say the chagili, are. For the purpose of the revelation of the divine. So now he's saying it's come out different than what he said before. In the previous chapter, he said that the Gimel Rishenis, they're both for Gili. Both the Gimel Rishenis, the Meichin, is what? Intellect is for us to be able to have a Sogelikis, to understand God. And the emotions of El is in order for us to have. An excitement, an emotional connection to God. Now he's saying that in the ten hidden spheres, remember that was Atsilis actually. Now he's saying the ten hidden spheres, Atsilis the Klolos, there's the two elements compared to, to reconcile with what it says in chapter 8. That in order to create something, you need to have the Midas. That actually creates something outside of yourself. But the Gilu comes from the higher dimension of the Mechen. He may be reconciling between the two interpretations that he spoke in the previous chapter. Let's see where this goes. And in general, who in Shema Vaya Bez, and in general, this higher level, I'm sorry, these two levels in general is Shema Vaya Bez. Sorry. Two Shema And in general, this lower level. Of the Tzedek Chisavus, in order to create, is the second Shem Havaya, as he explained in Commission Zbar, Lashon, Shu Lashon Mahave, who one brings things into being, Commission Zbar, Leel Perek Tazayin, like we discussed earlier, chapter 16. And this itself, there are the two levels. I'm not sure what he means by that. What, in Lashon Mahave? Or in Havaya? No, no, no. What do you mean? Bizeh gufa. What's bizeh? No, not in the attic. It's two levels. Where's their attic here? Where do you see word attic? It doesn't say no attic here. It says atzilus. Attack is attic was in the last chapter. Yeah, atzilu the kalos is ain't atonim. It's such a serious. Okay. Then the gemara says not attic. That's not what I'm asking. That's clear. What he's saying here is like this. I mean, I would understand this to mean that these two levels. Is the two Havayas. The first Havaya is the Kumul Rishenis. That's what he says in chapter 16. Yeah, that's that's what it is. But it seems a little different when he says, Okay, I understand. But I want to just see one second. I remember that Pedic. That Pedic is that talks about the two Havayas. In Pedic Tezayin, he says that the Havaya Havaya, in the Yud Gimli the Sarachman, right? We have two Havayas. The Yikra Havaya Havaya. He says the first one's Kaidem Alei Sarotzen. That's before he desired to have ten spheres. And the second one is the, already the desire, the, the ten hidden spheres. So one is the root of Sevev Klam and one is the root of Mamala Klam. That's what he said in chapter 16. No, it's higher than Shir, right? It's higher than Chochma, yeah. That's what he said in 16. I'm just telling you what he says there. Ah, I got it. That's why That's why he's saying this. He's saying it differently. There, it said, the two Havayas, as I said, the first Havaya is Kedem Alei Sarotzen, the root of Sevev Kalam, Makif, not Er Pnimi. There's no structure yet. That's what, he, that's what he's saying, yeah. That's what he says, Bedar Kal. Based on what he said there, both levels here is the Shem Havaya base. That's why Bezegufa. Understand? 
Yeah, and I'll explain it. I'll explain it. Let's let's go back to the whole picture here. The whole picture here is that there's two types of energies. One is a primizdik energy, and that's lecherech elamis. That's for the need of the worlds, and that has two parts to it: midas, emotions, and meich. And we discussed the different ways that understood the role of meich. Meichen creates primius and midas. Meichen allows us to contemplate God. Meichen is the level how God understands himself. Now he's saying that these two dimensions in the Yesh Lamer, that Gimel Roshen is, is to have a revelation in, in, in existence, and the Zayin Tachten is the emotions is to create existence. But based on what he's be speaking, we're speaking all for the purpose of existence. We're not speaking about Kedem Alei Sarotzen, before it arose in his desire, before there's ten hidden spheres, before there's Chochmah. We're speaking here, there's already Maschak and Bats Musa. So he says, that's why B'derech Klal, both these levels is the second Havaya, Melosh Mahava. They're both related to existence. The only, but in that itself, the relationship to existence, there's two types. One creates existence, one reveals into existence the divine. Or what he said before was, one reveals emotional divine experience and one is intellectual divine experience. That's what he's saying here. In the parentheses. Good. Because this, because now, that's what he just said, yeah. That's this Eidya Shlema. Reveals the divine in existence after it's created. It's like a gili. It's a gili. One is just enough measure that, that we should exist. The other one is a revelation of existence. No, there's no Makya Primi. They're both Primi. They're both Primi here. Yeah, they're both within. Yeah, we're not talking yet the revelation of the beyond. Right, right, right. Because now these two things that we're discussing before, these two that dimensions, the revelation to yourself and the revelation to another, elsewhere it explains that this is the level of chayu v'gamui. Remember, in Zayar he says, You are one with your energies and one with your gamui, with your, means literally bones, etzem. So there's two ways to interpret this, he said earlier. One is chayu is energy, and gamui is kalim. That's how he explains it in Tanya and in Eitz Chaim. In, uh, I'm sorry, in Tanya and elsewhere. And in Eitz Chaim, the explanation is, Iyu chayu is moichin and gamui is midis. He discussed it really. He reconciled it by saying that in, in intellect, the uh, intellect, even the containers are like air. Right. So basically, that's what he's saying. saying. These are the two levels. The garmuyu bishvil hazulus. The level of garmuyi is in order for is, is for the other. The purpose is for a hazulus, for another. Shenasa mokali savus. That it should become a source for existence. It's something like this, if you want to use the artist's example. An artist envisions creation, right? Then he creates a piece of art. So there's a revelation here, but it's, it's, it's the creation of the art. Now, if the artist wants to tell you and analyze and give you a revelation, why did I create this art? So God created the world, and we're left on our own to figure it out. But then God gives us a Torah and tells us, let me tell you now something about this. That's already Chayu. Chayu and Chayu is higher than just the force, the root of, of bringing into being. Wisdom is more important. Wisdom supports or gives strength to a wise man. More than ten governors. Ten and ba- ten. Uh, uh, what do we call them? Sodom, huh? Rulers. Rulers. So when a person is, let's say, a leader, more than he needs ten advisors, he needs wisdom, basically. right? We don't need your advice. So, which, by the way, is a line that was brought a lot earlier. What chapter is all the way back? Uh, 
I just want to see where that was brought. A very long back, way back. I think it's almost... Chapter 6. There he's interpreted that it's a Shabir. Shashashlitim Shabir he brought. There he interpreted um, Yeah, it's very similar. It's consistent with what he's saying here. So what we have is, okay. Liyaz b'chinis hagili. Shlitim is what create. Shlitim is what you have. You have you have uh, assistants or leaders to implement and actualize. Let's say running a city. You're running a city. The mayor of the city needs 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 uh, needs um, department heads, so to speak. Right. But that's for running it. That's hisavus. And but chachme is the gili of it. So why is it more powerful? Because it's the gili. Where do you get the ideas of how to run your city and so on? What well, you need more is wisdom than the ten, the ten. Even though I understand they can give advice and stuff like that. But he's basically making that statement. Okay. But refer back to chapter 6 where he delabits. The same thing we can say is in the ten hidden spheres, the same that the seven lower levels, the emotions are in order to bring things into being, existence. The gimlur shein, same bishvil hagili, and the gimlur shein is in order for the gili. I go back to the artist. An artist used his wisdom, and then he uses emotions to actually convey a piece of art. But if you want to know more about that art, that is not just conveyed in. What you're seeing, you need to go into his mind. That's Gimel Hashem. So it's an additional revelation beyond just bringing it into being. That's what he's saying here. And interestingly, before he said that Atzilus, even the Zayin Tachtenis is also Gili, Gili Hamidus. It's Pailas Alekim. V'ayim ha'shekosu b'day yenusi tofresh mem, you see? He's bringing now. He says, and look into Da'i Yenusi Tafresh Mem, which I referred to earlier, the end of last chapter, is, all ba- is actually that Mimer elaborate, uh, discussed. Via Shleimer, and we can say, Shadayin Tachtein is Zeo B'chinus Iyu, Hamisachadim Garmuhi. He's going a little more, a uh, little more deeper, a de- little deeper. The Da'i Tachtein is not just the level of Garmuhi, it's Iyu. <coughs> it's the divine dimension that unites with Garmuhi, with our emotions. The Gimurish. And the three higher levels, the intellect, is the way he unites with the energy, with chayuhi. And these are the two forms, the two two powers. One, the power to create, the power to bring things into being, and one is the power to reveal. All erpnimi. And look what we discussed later, chapter 153. So we find from this that the ten hidden spheres which are encompassed and concealed and hidden inside the infinite divine light, blessed be He. All ten spheres are in order to radiate in the world that come after the Tzimtzum. He's going back now to Er Pnim and Er Makif. So all this, beginning from the beginning of chapter 46, if you remember, he said, and then he said, but Er Makif is not like that, does not manifest. That's That comes from the Er Sof that's higher than the ten hidden spheres. Higher than Shirat Mebekeach. And he began to hold the hine in his bar the whole thing about the root of the energies and how they are. He explained, but it's basically the last, I would say, one, one, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half pages, he explained Er Primi and summed up what its role is. That its role is L'Tseir Chelemis. That's what he's now summing up. So all this is a summation from the beginning of, the beginning of page, 46, page 80, Beginning of chapter 46. I'm just uh, 
Give me your context here. So this is like almost now a new thing now. He's going back now. Now we're talking about the Eir HaBlikvul. The Eir HaEinsef, not the Eir HaGvul. That's the ten hidden spheres. Now we're talking about that was before that. It's not in order to radiate the world. That's just Gilim and Eitzah. So we have to explain this, and maybe, so let me just say, so in other words, we really have a key distinction here. Moichin, even though the mind, as you could say, is also gilly for yourself, right? We said that when you understand something, it's only for you. It doesn't, have to, it doesn't necessitate someone else. But he said, no. Moichin is still for another. The whole purpose of it was in order to bring gilly into the world, like he said. Or more specifically, to bring the ability for us to understand godliness, the Torah. This Gilil Atzmei is really Gilil Atzmei. Gilil Atzmei, it doesn't have anything. It's completely a revelation within yourself that is not manifesting in wisdom even, in intelligence. So well, later he's going to discuss its purpose is to create Bittl. So you have Isavas, Gilil and Bittl. It's to create that we don't really, you know, that don't, you know. If you only had Erag you would you would have a connection to God, but you'd also think... Like David HaMelech. Yes. Well, relatively, because even, because Zidia Satsme is already, but Badakis, you'd say, you know what, okay, I'm connected to God. The Eid HaBligvul teaches us that there's, basically it's Ave and Yira. One is closeness and one is Bittal. That's going to be discussed later. But right now, for all practical purposes, he's building the case from the bottom up. So first we're talking about our, our uh, the relation, the structure, how it relates to God. Now he's going to beyond structure. And then the question is, what's the purpose of beyond structure? Why, do, why is there an air like that? I'm just, it's important to go through these levels. That's the only way you really can get there. So he says, Who begins Gilim and Atzim? And now he gives an example. Beautiful example. Come in of a govern, like a color. What does it say, Mada and govern? Govern is a color. Mada is a, is a, is a shade. Huh? No, but not here. Mara and Gevin, Hebrew, uh, there's two words. Mara, when you say, is the look of something, and the Gevin is its color. It's almost like complexion and color. Tint and color. Tint and color. Okay. Mara and Gevin, she'en alifel eze dover, kim rak shemer al Like the tint or the, 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 the image or the color of any particular object, what purpose does it have? Ein alifel eze dover. It's not there to, 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 to affect anything. What function does it have? Its only purpose is to tell you, is to show you what the object is like. It's blue, it's green, it's orange. This example is critical because, remember, chokhmah is also to yourself. But chokhmah is not just reflecting what's inside there. Chokhmah is an entity of its own. Like he said, it's already a, a, a chachma. It says, it says, it's a chachma murgeshes. It's a mitzias. The only thing is, yet the others don't yet understand it. But it's the beginning of them understanding. Here, a color is what purpose? It's only to show. It's to show you the, the personality of the essence. It's almost like this. You ask the function. He's saying here the function. The the er primi, even the meichin of er primi, is in order to reveal to us. Um, and for us to internalize the divine. This one is just to show us what God is like. It's almost like God showing us his face, showing us his personality or something. So it doesn't have necessarily an internal element, it's just reflecting. It's like us standing in awe of seeing something far beyond us, but we see something. So it's some revelation here. Well, he's going to say many words for this. That's one way to put it, yeah. This is not like the light and the reflection of the sun, which is connected, attached to the essence. And similar to the essence. Why? Because there, the etzim is behidi. In the sun, the sun, the essence of the sun is fundamentally a radiating force. It's a luminary. Behidi means it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a light. It's a luminary. It's a, lum- it's a luminous entity. So therefore, it's natural, of course, that its ex- expression, its extension from it is also going to be light and reflection. 
Because it's it, the sun is it by definition it's a luminary. He's explaining here that this air is not like that. We'll soon get back to it. Hari mekol mokem air in yon hulifel pulis air. But nevertheless, this energy, this light, its purpose, its inyani, its inyan, is to function and do the function of of air, of light, of revealing. I'm not sure where he's going. Let's let's read, continue reading. Kamei shkosav ayit neisam elikim berakia shemayim leirot. Like it says, the Ebrista placed the sun in the heaven, in order to radiate on earth. So in other words, the air, he's saying is like this. Oh, I can't understand what he's saying. That when it comes to the sun, the sun itself is a luminous entity, and therefore it naturally it's light. But nevertheless, the light does have a function. It's not just, it just happens to be shining. The Torah says, God wants the sun to give light to the earth. So there's a purpose in this air. The air is to radiate the earth. The air Hashem is but this but the light of the sun is not to give us an image of the sun. Its purpose is not to tell us that the sun is a radiating force. Kim It has a purpose. Remember, we just said color has no purpose except to show us the personality of the thing that has that color. He's contrasting it. The sun light is not that way. The light of the sun is not just there to tell us what the sun is like. The light of the sun has a function. The function is to radiate on earth. God created it for that purpose. So we have like this. The sun by nature is an illuminating thing. And therefore the light that comes from it is also illuminating. But the light there has a purpose. The Hashem is... is, 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 Okay. The sun would be an example. The example of the sun would be the lower level of energy. The energy that is there to radiate in the world. So Gam came a yuchid ba'atzim, which is also united in the essence, or me'ein asim, and similar to the essence. So mukamokim in yoni hu And nevertheless, its purpose is to radiate. Remember, we said the whole purpose of the ten spheres, the whole purpose of atzilus, the whole purpose of the ten spheres, are let's say the chaylamis. And without the worlds, you don't have them. So in other words, the whole purpose of sunlight. It's not to reflect. It's not. It's not here just to show us the beauty of the sun. It's not. It's not to us to display the sun for us to be able to look at the sun and say how great you are. It has a function. The function is to bring warmth and illuminate this earth, to or illuminate and bring warmth to this earth. So that's an example for the oil apnimi, the energy that radiates in the world. So we have two things there. It's air. It's a, it's connected to its source. It's not separate from. It's not yesh. It doesn't have its own identity, but it has a purpose and a function. But the essence of energy, which is the energy that is not the Eir HaGvul, this is talking now the higher, the higher level, its only, purpose, it's only, it's only, uh, its only role is Gili, revelation. Like the, the color, the look and color of the etzim of the essence of the object. I'm giving another example. Like the aura, the glow on the face of a person. Like it says, the chokmas adam teir panov. That the wisdom of a person radiates on his face. The light, the energy of his wisdom is nikr, is recognizable on the glow of his face. What's the function of this? doesn't have a function. I mean, we learned and we will learn that when you look at the face of your teacher, it, it helps you. But we're talking about what is the function of this? It doesn't have a function that it radiates and reveals wisdom to another. It's simply a side effect, so to speak. It's almost like a uh, incident, uh, incident, incidental and incidental as a, a a result of the wisdom. So it shines, it glows. Refuse, it reviews the Shamir al Etzamach It just shows us on the essential wisdom that's within this wise person. Now he qualifies this because as I just said, and earlier in chapter forty three in his We explained that by looking at the face of your Mashbiya, 
it adds wisdom to you. So it does have something. But obviously, that, we, we explained there that through looking at the face, you receive from the essence of the wisdom of your teacher. Which means that the reflection of the face of Mashpia shows and reveals the essence of the wisdom. That's higher than what is revealed in the wisdom itself. And it's still Mashpia. And also, this is only during the Hashpa when you see the face. But without Hashpa, the role of this uh, glow is only to show us the correspondent of Onsube. What is the meaning of that? That, um, that he responded to, it's like when you see someone's face, you recognize who they are. That's his purpose. It's not to reveal something to you. It's just almost like a name. It's a sim. It's a um, what's the word for it? It's a uh, like a uh, what do you call a handle? So for us to be able to, to to relate it, to able to see. So so if someone sees someone's face, you recognize that person. It doesn't have any function. So what's his answer to the question? Really, two things he's saying: that the fact that we learned earlier that it adds in wisdom. That's not because the role of the of the of the glow is one that's revealing wisdom. It's because you relate to something that's higher than wisdom. So it's an atzmi is dika thing. It's not a, a gili dika thing. It's not like when you're transmitting wisdom, like you said, the sun transmits light. That light is to warm is to warm and illuminate this world. When you're talking about this type of energy, this energy is revealing the source. That's all it's doing. When you look at it. You're getting a sense of that essence that's higher than wisdom. So it adds something to you. But that doesn't contradict the fact that it's not some type of function. It's not that the teacher is making an effort that I'm going to glow my face glow to help you understand. It's a natural result of that type of wisdom. And also it's during the hashpa. It's when he's transmitting. But if you look at a wisdom wise person and he's not teaching, you see a glow in his face and you're not learning from him, then the glow is just showing you what he is. Shulchacham Gadol, that he's a great, that he's a very wise person. Ukumoy kein hu inyan Eid Eid Sov Shubchin is gilim in Etzim Levat. And the same thing is Eid Eid Sov, the divine infinite light, that just, it's only a revelation of the, from the essence. V'gamim lo yihoyo el meshayach b'chin azu. And even if there were no worlds, this level would also be possible. Because as he said before, the Erpni me without worlds, what, there's no need for them. There's no purpose for them. There's no role. But this has a role because it's just revealing what he is. You could always ask, why does he need to reveal it? Fine. We'll discuss that. But at, at, at this level, even without the worlds, you, you have this thing. In other words, you don't need another entity for the revelation of this. Uh, uh, that's what it means. It would be called Gilead if you didn't have that. Obviously. But, but bottom line is, there's no need. The other ones, Chochme, even the Meichen, Gimel Roshen, Zayin Takhten, is the intelligence, intellect, and the emotions are all for the worlds. That's why he said before, you see, I was a little thrown because before he said the Shemesh, it's not like the sun because the sun is by nature a luminary. And really what he was wanting to say there was not that it's a luminary, he wanted to say that the purpose of the air has a purpose there. Why was it important to say Eir er, er is Behiri? Usually Chassidus brings that by saying that the sun is defined by being a source of light and Atmos is not defined by that. So now he's going back to that. This revelation, this Eir, er, it's not necessary, God forbid. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a um, deliberate revelation. One that comes with will, by will. Because that's the God's will and desire, there should be a revelation of light. So in other words, for example, by a color of an object, the color, there's no choice. An object has a color. It can't withhold its color. Here, God could have withheld this air. So he's making a qualification. 
So it's, it, but nevertheless, once he desires it, it's still it's like a color. All it's doing is revealing him. It's not something. So this is like an in between thing. It's by by will, but it's only revealing him without any other function. There would be, the, but they, no, there's no reason, there's no entity of chachma altogether. Chachma is a defined. Why would God need to understand Himself? Because He under. Yes, the end, I told you the end is go back, go here. Okay, just since I see you can't rest. So, so okay, you, I know you want to jump. So go to the mimer. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm, I, want, I want to just show you something. This is a few hundred pages from now, mind you, but but that doesn't matter. It says like this. Chapter 128, page 247. Go there a second. I want to read a line for you so that will calm your nerves. You got to see it? Chapter 128. Reish Mem Zayim. Beginning of the chapter. He says, We have to understand. Because right now, compared to Er Primi, its, its purpose is only revealing. Later, it's not for it's going deeper. I told you, it's climbing the ladder. Atzimus doesn't need anything. So at the end of the day, but, but, when you, but, but, but that, you have to look. The problem is we've become spoiled. We've been taught already about Atzimus. So we're right away wondering, you know, what's the purpose? But he says here, Even the energy that comes from the Atzim, for sure, also is some Kavana. Because God, what he says, because God is not forced, he's not compelled to reveal. And it goes back, he doesn't refer to this chapter, but it's another chapter, a similar chapter, that says the same thing. It's not like the sun. So that's the question. The answer is, that there should be bitl into the worlds. So when you say, let me let me explain, just to understand, just just for the record, so we don't have any confusion. Moichin, at the end of the day, it's true that first he needs Yudias Atzmi, he has to understand it himself, and then we relate to it. But at the end of the day, he's recognizing our being. So it's almost like saying that God has a purpose in creating. This Eir, the God is, uh, Etzem, teaches us that God does not really need us. That God is beyond us. And that's, that's what it reveals to us. That's and that's, yeah, so the purpose is that there's no purpose. Really, if you want to put it that way. And what I mean by no purpose, no purpose for us. That there's something there that's beyond us. And at the end of the day, you need both. In other words, it's not just, we're not playing semantics here, that everything has purpose and meichin, this is. One's function is that we should integrate God in us, and one is to teach us that God is beyond us. So that's a purpose, but it's a purpose not for you to connect it, for you to realize it's beyond us. That's the end of the story, in that, in that context. But for all practical purposes, in context of purpose, as far as lula ha'elamis, because you could say a simple question. One second, if there was no Eda and Sof Abligvul, you could say, you know what? I understand God doesn't need us, but once He desired us, He's bound to us. And that's it. Because the whole point of Esa Spheres would not exist if there were no worlds, if there weren't us. We're trying to tell us, no, there's a whole dimension of the divine that's not connected to us per se, our structure. It answers a lot of questions which we'll discuss as we learn later. For example, there was that famous classic debate and argument in important Sherish Mitzvah Hatfila with the Makubal and the Bal Nigla, right? So he asked the question, you Makubalim, when you pray, you think of every Sphira. Are you praying to the Sphiras? He says, God forbid, we're praying to God. How God manifests in each dimension, in love, in Chesed, in Gedula, Tiferes, Gedula, Gedula, Tiferes, and so on. He says, Ani And I pray like a child. I don't know anything. I don't know all these levels. I jump straight to the essence. So the whole basis of Chassidus is, why don't we just jump to the essence? Because we want it to be integrated in our structure. But there's a downside to structure. Remember, in the interface, the structure is on the terms of our structure. Eir ultimately, 
is true. It's still in the infinite light, but it's still on our terms. It's a structure that the artist... We want to know if there's a part of the artist that's not within that one painting. We want to know the other dimensions of the painting. So there, basically that's saying that it doesn't have a purpose for the world. It has a purpose to reveal the divine. So it's actually a gift that God is giving us. The artist can give us only the image that he gave us. and says, you know what, figure me out from that image. The Erev Ligul says, I'm also going to reveal to you things that are not part of the structure of existence. So in that context, when we say no purpose, meaning it doesn't, it's like a color. A God is saying, I'm not just going to show you um, how I am kind, so you could be kind. I'm going to reveal to you my face, my glow of my face. And you say, what's the purpose of that? Nothing, you're just going to see what I'm like. So it's like a much higher level. But is that a purpose? Or is that just a revelation of the divine? So obviously God doesn't need it. I'm just going a little jumping further what he says later. But for all practical purposes, let's just go back here. Compared to, compared to structure, this revelation is just to reveal the essence. <laughs> That's a very deep oive that you just said. Om nam in is gil So we have here that it's like a double... Uh, almost like a double entendre here, a double uh, type of paradox. On one hand, you know, you would say the reason a color of an object is only reflecting the object and no purpose is because it, it's just a ex- natural extension of the object. Here he's saying it's not a natural extension, but its only purpose is to reveal like a color does. So it doesn't have the element of a color that a color of, let's say, a, a, a red apple. A red apple is just telling you that the apple is red. But it's it's but the apple can't choose to be yellow. Here the apple could be choose Etsum could choose a different color, but the color but the, he chose this or so no color he chose a color and this color is is only there to reflect him. Usually choice would imply purpose. Here he's saying here choice does not imply function. Rather choice would imply purpose and function, like the choice of Esosuris Agnosis. Why would the Esosuris Agnosis? He made a whole case. God doesn't need it for himself. Because he wants to create a world in this way. Without those worlds, you don't have esoteric spheres. Right. But the question is, what about the revelation of just revealing himself? That That is, is not for the purpose of the world. So what's the purpose of it? And, it has, and it's by will. It's not forced. So that's just to reveal himself. That's the difference. That's part of the, 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 the you, have, you have to ask the question, what does it mean when we have Ispilus and, and the Zog Elikis, when you understand God, what are we understanding of God? The answer is you're understanding God, how He's ultimately manifest in existence. Ultimately, obviously, the Eir HaGvul, the Fnei HaTzimtzum, is one with the Eir HaBligvul. So the truth is, it's the bridge, the interface between us and the infinite light is also going to go through the Eir HaGvul. But now we're introduced a dimension that's beyond right now, the function that Eir HaGvul has. Eir HaGvul has a function, whether it's the function to create or the function to reveal, reveal the divine within us. Here, the only thing it is, is revelation of Hazgalos Mina Atmos. Beyond this, he's kind of again, and has wrote something. So it's a... Tainug and Rotson I would not use. I would beyond the ten hidden spheres. That's what I would use. I don't know. That's the first chapter, you know. But I know the first chapter. The, 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 well, the first chapter is Kesser, right, right, right. the desire to want something. Right. Correct. But you could say the desire to want could also be the desire to reveal the Etzim. Right. That's, makiv, that's the Makiv. This is Not necessarily, this may be it. Because remember, at the end of the day, Erpanimi is no lower than Kesser. This is Rotson. He didn't say it yet, but anyway. We can say this is the light that was created in the first day. You know, when it says God created light, so it says in Chazal, like he's going to explain here, that that light was different than the light that came later. When we see light today, is sunlight. What was the light the first day? There was no sun yet. So when it says, what kind of light was there? It took three more days. The fourth day is when God created the sun and the moon. So, so Chazal speak that that light was called Er Shanivri B'yem Rishon. It's a particular dimension. It's light that was created in the first day. The Isa B'Gemara Chigiga Dafid Beis Amad Aleph. It says in the Gemara Chigiga, 12a. It says 
air was created in the first day. The question, doesn't it say that God placed the sun and the moon, the sun, on the fourth day? So we have a question. That's the question of the Gemara. Like you said before, that's the sun. And the Gemara answers, so there's the question. How could you say that? What do you mean day one was created light? It says that he plays the sun on the fourth day. The answer is like Rabbi Loza. What does Rabbi Loza say? That the, the, the light that God created in the first day, Adam, Adam, meaning later, Adam, was able to look at that light and see from one end of the world to the other. It was a very special light. So a light was created on day one that's not regular light. When we look at something, you can only see that far. This light gave Adam the power to look safer, to, to gaze from one end of the world to the other. Because this is because this is the light in Stakal Baruch, the light that God looked into. Ahmed I mean, he's bringing the whole Ash. Basically, what happened? So God created a light the first day. That's a special light that would give Adam the power. The God, the God, a light that God Himself is, the, sees, and then Ahmed Vagonze, God concealed this light. Sometimes it says Gonze Beteda, He concealed it in Torah. And when Adam was created, He was able to access this light. And it's known that the word Yemerishin, which is the first day, is the Gematria of Keser. It's the same Gematria as Keser. Okay, you see here. That's the air that's higher than Ishtalshalus. Air within Ishtalshalus, light and energy in Ishtalshalus, you can only see that far. You turn on a light, when it's dark, you can't see anything. You turn on a light, you can't just suddenly see from one end of the world to the next. You can see half a mile, quarter mile, so on and so forth. The light of Keser, that's created by Yem Rishon, which is Gematria Keser, that light is higher than Shtalshlus. For how you order Marishim, Mabed Bay Mesefa Elam. And Abraham gazed into it, looked into it, and could see Mesefa Elam. Could see the end of the world in it. Because on this level, there's no difference. There's no levels. There's no dim- in this level, there's no dimensions. No, he spoke earlier, there's no gradations. You see, when you see with our eyes natural light, there's gradations. You can see a better eyesight, you can see a little further. But it's all measurable. Because by, 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 in other words, space affects our, our, the, the light. With, with, the world is not transparent. You can't see through a wall. You can't see everything equally. So space, basically the particles affect the wave. In light, in Stauschlis, energy is not quantum. Right? Why is energy not quantum? Because... Energy is in a structure. It's air primi. So there's higher or lower, more or less. I could see this, I could see that. Dimensions. This energy, he's, he's describing quantum energy, by the way. Quantum energy, if I could call it that, because quantum energy also has levels, also has structure. Okay. Okay, fine. But he says, but, but he says, but regular law, yes, Luke, and regular, and mere bechala elm is beshava. It radiates in all the worlds equally. That's why you can see from one end of the world to the next. It's like Superman. Well, Kamoishi is by it. Yeah. But maybe it's the root of quantum. Yeah, quantum suggests that. Well, let's put it this way. I'll give you an example. When we have x ray, an x ray can see through something an eye can't see. An x ray maybe is, is, is getting a little energy from the air obliquable because it's able to see through uh, that's, that's matter. That's a quantum. That's a quantum. Thing. Good, good, good. It's, I'm saying it's, it's a. It can't be here, but it can be there. Yeah, okay. So this is actually much higher. Okay, fine. Well, Kamoishi is by as we shall explain. He's going to explain this. Very nice. So here we have that. And that's Kesser. You see, this is Kesser. This is not the Esser Sphere Sagnosis. This is higher. And the third volume is there, page 204. B. Isa, Nuhura Kadmor, says that there's Nuhura Kadmor, the Barakut Shabrichu. Have a noir, add the loy, have a alma yochel, the Mesavle. One second, one second. Barakut Shabrichu. Have annoyed. Yeah, Yochel the Mizbele. 
right. I know that, but when, how do you read it? Okay, so it says like this. Isa. Nehede Kadmo, there was this primordial light, energy, that God created. Have Noir. It shined, it, right, it radiated. Adele, have a alma, yachal, lemizbele. But t- until the world was created, we were able to tolerate it, basically. That's how you read it. No, I mean, the, the world could not. I understand, but how do you read that? Adele, have a. Adele, have a alma, yachal, lemizbele. As they feel as development is going to result. Like that. And, uh, to the extent that the world could not tolerate. But either way, he's talking about an energy, a primordial energy. That radiated, basically, it's beyond the level where the world, because the world cannot tolerate such an energy. That's like the ocean of Yemenishim, basically. It means that it's an energy that's not commensurate, proportionate to the world. I'm sorry, but the worlds and the containers. It's not commensurate to the worlds of the containers to receive this type of energy in an internalized way. You cannot receive it that way. Now he's going further and analyzing it. The Indian Omad Vagonze. And what is the Indian of whether he rose and he concealed it? That like we said earlier, he said, you know, after the first day he concealed it, and other Mauritian could look into it. Kosov Bemekamelech, it says in Emekamelech, Sharvov Perikutes. Sixth gate, chapter nineteen, Shanasa Bibchinis Eir Makif. That once he hid it, it became an er makif, a transcendent energy. Well, the fize yeshlem, and according to this, we can say the bishar shem beir and sef shalifni et simsim, that the root in the infinite light before the simsim, inyan vayita mesim elikim, the idea of placing the sun in the heaven, shu er hashemesh, which is the sun light of the sun, lahayir who mashashir erim seif lehar elamis, that's what he envisioned. Shir atzme bekeich, he envisioned the erim seif to radiate the worlds. Remember, we said the sun is to radiate. There's a purpose in it. And here he's tying it all together. And here are the ten hidden spheres from where it's transmitted the energy of the kav of the line, the, the thread. That comes with a measurement and a and a mishkal and weight commensurate to the world. And the energy that's created in the first day of is the infinite light which it's it is only the revelation of the essence and does not come in a form of uh, of 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 measure and parameters commensurate to the world because it doesn't have any dis- distinct levels. Um, any levels, any any divi- the, the, the diverse levels. Umeir bekulim b'shovin and radiates in all of them equally. Ve'einam b'chinas islap shes pnimi bekelim kim b'chinas er makif and it does not manifest in any internal way in the containers, only in a form of makif. So this really ties it up, makes it very clear. As a sphere loses these two levels. Let's con- let's finish the mimer. I'll finish the mimer. According to the above, we'll understand what it says, which is the beginning of the Mimer. What is Rashi say? What does Rashi say? What's the two words? You, my prophets, console them. You, my prophets, console. Console my nation. So it's like God saying to the Nevi'im, that they should say to the people. Levim, I'm telling you, console, console my nation. This is the two nachmus. Now it's known that every nevu, every prophecy comes from the level of netzach and heid of atzilus. And the prophecy of Yeshaya, who said nachmu nachmu ami, that comes from the level of netzach and heid of bria. That means by Yeshaya he had prophecy, but it was a prophecy that already manifested from Atzilus in Bria. Yecheskel be Yitzira. We learned this also earlier. And Yecheskel was even a lower level. That's why his, his, his prophecy is even more elaborate, more details. His Nevoah was Netzachahed in Yitzira. For Nevoah's Moshe, Prophecy of Moshe is Atzilus itself. 
All this is Eprimi. All these levels is Eprimi. It's an internalized energy. Which means it comes from the ten spheres of Atsilis. Now, however, it's known that in the base Amigdash in the temple, there were revelations that were higher than Atsilis. The base. 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 The The three rooms, the Yurim, the three chambers that were in the base, maybe the base Mikdashim. Where's Akhto? The Bate Mikdashim. The Bate Mikdashim. Because the two things, usually Beis HaMikdash is, is written differently. Like, look at the line before. Look how Beis HaMikdash is written there. Maybe Bebate Mikdashim, Bebate Mikdash, Bebase Mikdash, okay, Bebate Mikdashim probably. So it says elsewhere that the three sections, the three chambers, the Bekadish Kedashim are Yigilead and Shoshal Amalamatzilis. The three sections was like this. There was the uh, Kedish Kedashim is the Gili that's higher than Shtalshlis, higher than Atzilis. The Kedish was the Gili in Atzilis. That's why you have this, the, the structure you have the the Menorah, the Shulchan, the Mizbeach, and then the the the, Elmoy, the outer chamber um, was 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 where the Mizbeach Chitzim was the way Bia. So you have Atzilus, Briyat Sira Sia, the louder level, Atzilus, and higher than Atzilus. First, second, or first, second, or third. The three sections in the base of English. No, no, not third for sure. Now he's talking about what it was. In general, it means that they radiated the light of Sevev, Makif. Literally, virtually revealed. It's a different Rosh Hashanah. Okay, these are the ten miracles that were in the Beis HaMikdash. That's the ten miracles. That they were above nature. And that's when the Shechina was removed, left, in time of Golos, in exile, in diaspora. Amru, It says, so, it says, it says, that when it talks about the Silech HaShechina, when God, when the Shechina, the presence of the Divine, left, so it says, "Begalusa kuchbricha solik leila." That in Golos, God goes leila, leila twice, higher and even higher. The stalkus is leila and even higher. What's the two leilas? The leila ubchin is bina. The first leila is he goes from malchus into bina, meaning from the shkina being resting in the base amigdash. Now he's removed himself to bina, which is still meichin, but it's removed. Uleila, the second uleila. Is Pchinsa Kesar, where he goes even further into his essence. Vizel Loksa Bekiflayim. And that's the meaning that we were Loksa, we were struck twice. Loksa is, that's what it says, Nechama Bekiflayim, we're consoled twice because we were struck twice. Hainu, sometimes it says twice is Beis Amigdash, first Beis Amigdash, the second Beis Amigdash. But here he's explaining that in each Beis Amigdash there was a double Maka, a double, a double striking. He's going to explain that save of a premier market. The high of silica air.
Oh, no. Down here, don't go to Kessler. Why, why, why does it have to have a stop with me? I don't understand that. I don't know what you're saying. What does that say? He says that we go lose God is solely Eilu Leili. Went higher and higher. Those are two stages of the siluk. Two stages. It's like histalkus. Well, when something stages, removes. It wouldn't be at the same time. That's what I'm Why not at the same time? Why say two stages? It didn't rest there. Because 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 it's just like there's ten spheres. There's all these worlds. I mean, there's all kind of, I mean, what, you could ask a question about the whole shadish talshus. Why there's stages? Things happen in stages. Or two dimensions, if you want to put it that way. And i got to go over this again because I think the sound went off. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just put it back on. So, there was a revelation in the Holy, in the holy of Holies. So he said the three sections of the Beis Amigdash, so you had Bia is the outer section, Kedush is Atzilus, and Kedush is higher than Atzilus. So that was left. That's the ten miracles in the Beis Amigdash. And that's when the Shekinah was removed in Golas, when the Shekinah left. So it says, Golusa, in exile, Kuzhbricha Salik Leila Leila. He went up higher and higher. Leila Leila is Bina's, Bina is the first Leila. Well, Leila Bechinis HaKesar. And the higher Leila is in Keser. Vizel Loksa Bekuflan, that means we were struck twice. Hainu Silik Er Primi Vermekif, that it affected both Er Primi and Er Makif. The internal energy and the higher and the beyond the transcendent energy, and that's why That's why, also in the consolation, he has to consolate all us twice to bring us back both those energies. Like it says, like a man whose mother consoles him. That's also how I will console you. What's the pirush? means mother bina. That's the beginning, the primary beginning of cosmic order. That's the gili of Erpnimi. The level of Anechi begins gili Ermakif. That reveals the Ermakif. So what happened was when the Beis Hamikdash, we need a connection with God both through Erpnimi and Ermakif, and Beis Hamikdash took both away, and therefore we need both returned. That's the energy that's mamish ain't safe. The higher one. And that's the two. This is uh, having a problem. So this is Vizel Nachmatim and Avim Begili and Avur. That's Nachmatim and Avim. That the Avim, the, the prophets, are revealing Atzilus. That's Er Pnimi. What part? What do you mean part? Part, the, part of what? Part of the, the Shkina, the the part of going to the Tesro, they all made a stop. And, you know, I don't know what you mean. Speak, what, what do you mean by part and all? Can you explain what the word part means? Malchus of the Shkina. God manifested on this earth in Beis Amidish. We had Er Pnimi and Er Makif. Er Shkina. Shkina is Er Pnimi. So Shkina, Shkina is in general God's presence on earth. V'shachanti b'seichem. So, and and the Golas was that the both elements, both dimensions that were revealed in the base of English. Right. So one went up to one went up to one went up to Bina, one went up to. No, there's no one on one. It's, it's it's the same thing. I mean, what, what do you mean by one on one? So the two dimensions of Golas, the Ela or the Ela, it says that he went up and up. So he says one is Bina, one is Kesser. He says this is the Siluk of Ermakif and Erprimi, both. You could have only had one. You could have only had the first siluk. That you just bina, and that's it. But it went no. It also ermakiv was also left. So we need to have an achama consolation on both of them that we should have them both back. They both wound up in the same place. 
I don't know where's this place you're talking about. This is not physical. Correct. Leila or Leila. Correct. So he says Leila begins bino. Leila begins kasser. Lokse bekvayin and chesiluk er primi er makiv. What do you ask me? If the er primi went into the er makiv, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. It makes sense. What difference does it make? No, the Kesser is the Ermakiv. Right. They, they both wound up in Kesser. No, 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 no. It doesn't say such a thing. No, they both are not here. That's, that's, I know that. That's, that's all that's relevant. Matter. That's all that's relevant. Where they ended up? That's right. Regardless, where, 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 where? This explains it. That's right. No, why, why would it be relevant where they ended up? Who cares? Okay. They ended up, they're not here with us. Where they ended up? They ended up concealed. Okay. Yeah. And then it's unconcealed by... by Nechama, when God consoles, consolation... The mother cons- one, 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 one consolation, the first level, is the revelation of Bina. And right. same thing, right. Anoichi, also Keser, also is revealed. Right. Right. So what, what What are you saying? I don't understand what you're saying, but... That is being, that, 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 that the stuff stuck in Bina... No, no, it doesn't say such a thing. It doesn't say anywhere that. Okay. It just says that there were two stalkers. One was the stalkers in Bina, and one was the, the, the um, Kesser. Okay. Both of them were down here on earth, right. and both were removed. Right. That's the destruction of the Vesemidosh. That makes sense? Yes. And now we're bringing them back down. Right. So the first Nacham is the Nevim, Atam and Nevim, you the prophets, in the revelation of your prophecy, which is Netzach Vahed of Atzillus should console. And then there's the higher consolation which comes from Atmos Habligvul. That's what it says, Nachem Asami. So the first one he says to the prophet, do you console them? With your level of Atzillus, the revelation of, of Gvul, Eira Gvul. And the second one is Nachem Asami I will now console, will console them with the Eira Bligvul. And this is the meaning, speak to the heart of Jerusalem and reach and call out to her. Speaking to the heart is the level of Ermakif, the transcendental light. And calling out to her is the level of Ermakif. Like he says in the Teira, in the second explanation, the Vyadaita and Veschanon, the Teira. Yeshlema, we can say this is what lost lovey, the makif itself will become literally primi. Like it says elsewhere in Shamu Bamachal, Machal is the Machal the, the circle that they will make and all the tzaddikim will be there. She is Khabas Amakiv Ba Primu. Shamu Bamachal. They'll place him in a circle. Circle is Makiv. Shamu Bamachal means to place him in the Makal is the union of the Makif in the Primi. The, the primi will be inter- the makif will be internalized. And that and we can say that's why even the second nechama that comes from the etzim from the vigvul also came through the prophets. Because later in the nevuah in the third week of the shiva de nechem we're going to learn that God Himself comes to console. Here everything is coming through the nevim. The only difference is the nevim give on their own they give the er primi the nechama. That level from Bina, and they also reveal and they give you also anoichim and which is, which means the makif is coming through the pnimi. That's why first it says speak to the heart of Jerusalem and call out to her. So first speak to her that is giving them their makif, and then call out to her, internalize it, mamish. This is what it means, Mola Tzava. Um, that she's filled, when it says, um, that she is filled with, um, I think it means, so Tzava usually means filled with its, with its armies, but I think here it means, well, let's see how he interprets it. So Molotov, he says, this is the level, is the Bechin Seir Pnimi. That's the level, Molotov, okay, me, ah, 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 ah. Molotov means it's filled with the armies, I think, of the enemy. So console, console, that's my nation. Speak to the heart of Jerusalem and, and call out to her. 
Kimola Tzava that she's filled with with enemy, maybe. Maybe not, I'm not sure. Bechinis Er Pnimi, the level of internal energy, Kenitze Avena Baham Shachas Er Makif. Because her sin was forgiven. Was, was uh, what's the word Nitza means? Consoled, was uh, pacified. Baham Shachas Er Makif. The Mishamu Slichas Avenis Kiyadu Amavur Makamacha. Molot Tzava is filled with sin, probably. Filled with inequity. That's what Molot Tzava is. So it's filled with iniquity because that's after what happened after the destruction. So Molot Sova means Molot, filled with it, Erpnimi. Why? Because the sins were forgiven through the the drawing down of the Ermak, of the Misham, who slichas Havenis Kidu Mavakamachar. Because from there comes the forgiveness of sins. So Yishalayim on its own in the Erpnimi was filled with iniquity. And then that was forgiven. Vizau Nachamu Nachamu Ami. Nachmu Atem Nevi Begila Nevua. This is the double Nachmu twice console my nation. Nachmu Atem Nevi, you, my prophets. Console them, begili hanavur shu ha'am shacha erpnimi. In the revelation of your prophecy, which is netzach heid, as he said, that's the drawing down of the erpnimi, the internal energy. For eid nachmu asam imchines nechama yena, and the second, and additionally, console my nation, the level of nechama yena, a higher, supernal consolation, da noichi anachemchem, that I console you, not just ima, the bina. Ba'am shachas gili ermakif, in the revelation of the higher ermakif, transcendental energy, sheyer beprimi ismamish, that should radiate and be completely internalized. And that's called to the heart of Jerusalem. Speak to the heart of Jerusalem, Makiv, and call out to her in an internal way. Kitzur. We could also say, additionally, we can say, We learned earlier in chapter 8 that the interface of Atzilus is to two things. In order to create, to bring into being the lower worlds and also to reveal. That's the two levels. That's in order to create. is to reveal. That's Those two levels. The same thing is also in the root of the energies in the level of Atsilas the Klolos. He's, that's what he, he adds here. That, um, nom, okay. That that's all. So there, there's those two dimensions. Um, nom, er, makiv, However, the ermakiv, er, the transcendental light, its root is in, in the infinite light. That's just the revelation of the essence. So come out of a given, like a a look and a color. Not like the sunlight. And it's also possible without any existence, without worlds. This is the light of the first day that was hidden. Hidden that it should only be makif. Surrounding, not internalized. And according to the above, we understand the posseg nachmu nachmu ami. So he sums up the er makif and er primi rooted in the two levels of the dimension of energy. So we just finished chapter 48, discourse 12, pages 83 through 85.